From Columbia, South Carolina, this is WIS News Primetime. Well, good evening. Thanks so much for joining us for WIS News Primetime. I'm Greg Adeline. And I'm Hannah Burbank. Every weekday at 730, we'll be here to tell the untold stories of kindness, community, and hope across the Midlands. And tonight, we're remembering the life of a young woman and shining a light on addiction. The Taylor Watford Foundation in West Columbia holds their annual 5K on May 18th. And this year's race says it is in honor of a young woman named McKenna Harris. And tonight, we hear her story from the aunt still coming to terms with the loss. The words of a loving aunt. McKenna was a beautiful soul. Describing her niece, McKenna Harris. She was young and vibrant and she was a good athlete. Rattling off the endearing list of traits that reveal a heart of kindness. She had a big heart for people. A lot of times in school, she would actually pick out the children that maybe didn't have somebody to talk with or may not have felt part of a group and McKenna would seek them out. And she loved her family. My mother has a lake house and we all meet up at the lake house, about 17 of us, and we would go and have fun. She loved to ski, she loved to swim, she loved to hang out with her Nana and, um, and all of us. We were, just, we were a very close family. McKenna was in her early 20s, holding down a job at Samsung in Newberry when her family began to notice changes. She would be really sleepy. She'd fall asleep at the drop of a hat. She'd always, if, if we were at the lake, she'd always be lying on the couch falling asleep. And that's how we knew something was not quite right. As her family could only guess as to what was going on, McKenna eventually came clean. What happened is she confessed to her mother, my sister, that she had a problem. Found out that she had been taking um, Percocet, which is oxycodone and acetaminophen. Oxycodone is an opioid. A problem McKenna seemed eager to solve. Through the Taylor Watford Foundation in Wake Up Carolina, McKenna found support and eventually entered rehab in 2023. Once released, she was seemingly on the road to recovery. Until one night in September. She had gone to the McDonald's in Chapin. She was gonna get her something to eat. And evidently on that trip, she must have acquired those tablets. The tablet she received laced with fentanyl. We didn't know, we thought she was doing fine and she relapsed. And it was the first relapse she had was, you know, was devastating. It cost her her life. Now, this grieving aunt is left with memories of the niece who loved her cooking and was always smiling, whose life was cut far too short. You know, when I'm going to make an eclair pie or pasta salad that she loved, that's what I'm feeling the most. The grieving process buffered only by faith. You pray a lot, you pray a lot, you pray a lot. And she clings to hope knowing McKenna's pain is over, while her memory lives on forever. You know, we wanted her to be healed on this side of eternity, but we know she was healed on the other side. God had other plans. And I know where she is, and that's a comfort to me. But it's still, you miss her like crazy. Yeah, just powerful memories of uh, McKenna yeah. and, you know, her family loved her so much mm -hmm. and it's so difficult to wrap our minds around situations like this because clearly, you know, people who are struggling with addiction, mm -hmm. um, they're fighting. They really are fighting a battle and a lot of them just have so much pain that we really don't understand, but anything that we can do to support those families is obviously something that we want to be a part of. Absolutely, like you said, it's a battle, and I love what her family is doing, using that pain for purpose. Yeah. It's a long way. But you can actually register for the Taylor Watford Foundation 5K, named in honor of McKenna Harris, by clicking on this story on WISTV.com. They're offering a promotion for WIS viewers of 10% off. Yeah, meanwhile, raising awareness of opioid use and fentanyl poisoning is now a passion for McKenna's aunt, Kathy, who you just saw. She is a professor of pharmacology at USC, and to honor her niece, she offered to show us a demonstration of the life-saving drug Narcan that first responders use when responding to an overdose in hopes of saving lives. Those are just, just to have on hand. I know law yes. enforcement has those on yes. hand, other professionals, do. and even just people who are family members, perhaps somebody with a 
-hmm. substance use problem, they yes. have these on hand. And not a bad idea. You know, today, one of my P4 students, Hannah, told me that she carries them with her when she goes to a concert or anywhere because you never know when somebody is going to fall out. And you can just take this right here and this red nozzle. You can um, like press it with your thumb into one of their into one of their nostrils. And you can find Narcan at any CVS or Walgreens. Also, different agencies may offer Narcan free of charge. No questions asked, including the Alpha Center in Kershaw County. All of that information will be included on this web story on WISTV.com. DHEC as well on their website has a full list of places where you can get free Narcan. So there, there are resources available. And this is a life-saving one at times. No doubt. All right.